There, there he is. is. What's up, pal? What's up, boys? How we doing? Pretty good, man. Yeah. Pretty good. Well, the, the, I was uh, late because of your other show. How, how'd that go? I thought it went well. I don't know. All right, fuck them. Whatever. <laughs> it's all about this show. Don't worry about that. <laughs> We'd like to start the yeah, show by yeah. uh, uh, wishing you a happy anniversary. 11 years? 11 years, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, we, it was on Saturday, I think, our, our anniversary. Yeah, 11 years. Seems super excited about that. <laughs> 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 I love what you got going on here with this uh, This background. Looks very classy, very masculine, very sleek. I like it. It is extraordinarily masculine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It was the one. It was it, it was a space in our house because my wife and I built. Actually, we built this house, um, and we moved in about four years ago. But this was. The, I was like, I need one space to be just like just yours. Yeah, the, the, just like it looks the way uh, an extremely masculine candle. <laughs> is that a candle going behind you? Is that a flicker of a candle? I said, yes, it is. Oh, yeah. You classy <laughs> son of a bitch. I bet that smells like whiskey or something. <laughs> it's, like, it's kind of this like woodsy. It's like, you know, it's got some vanilla in there, so it's kind of sweet, but it also kind of smells like a f like a campfire. It's fucking dope. <laughs> Yo, uh, so... Mm. I think this is going to end up being the best thing that ever happened to AP Bio, jumping onto the the streaming world, where I feel like you guys can kind of take the shackles off a little bit, really let it fly, and uh, and get down with like the streaming crowd, because it looks it certainly looks like this season's going to be uh, off the walls, pretty funny. It's I'm so I, I'm honestly like I'm I know I know that like I'm 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 clearly I'm here to promote the show and and all that kind of stuff, but I mean. The, the truth is, man, I, I'm I'm watching the show and I am laughing my ass off. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I don't know if that's a, a, a good sign or a bad sign, but I, I I take it as a good sign because, like, I I think like I've definitely seen things that I'm in where I'm like, oh no, really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that where your like, is oh. that your own like insecurity, or do you think it's actually just like a bad project? Uh, I think so, most of the time, I think it's because it wasn't good. The really? Thing wasn't good. Okay. I, I, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I've gotten pretty accustomed to looking at myself on camera. Uh, I've had so much practice. You know, you get when you spend a lot of time in the editing room editing yourself, oh, like nightmare. like I have on Sunny. Yeah, uh, I just I kind of I I've I, I've been I'm I'm able to objectify myself. In other words, I I'm able to watch the show and to some degree not see me to actually see the character and to be able to kind of separate myself enough to to watch something and go i know that's really good or that's really bad mm -hmm. and, I, and I, I i'm watching this new season of I, I mean i i love every season of ap bio i really do but this new season is it's just it's kind of next level and the 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 show's creator mike o'brien is just you know I, I i really get the sense that he well we actually talked about it a little bit i think i think he was feeling a little like you know what uh peacock has given us a second chance here uh, but I don't know if we'll ever get to do it again after this. This might be my last shot. So he, he really wanted to go down swinging if mm -hmm. he was going to go down at all or succeed. He was like, I'm either going to hit it out of the park or I'm going to go down swinging hard. And uh, I personally think he knocked it out of the park. And and I, I hope people are watching it because uh, it's I don't think there's anything else right now that's that's like it. Do you think you're a bit of like a rock for Mike in that situation? Because I, and maybe I'm just, I, I, I misremember it, but I feel like Sonny didn't really take off until season three ish. Like I, I was in high school or early college at the time. So like it was on for probably three or four years before I was like, oh fuck, this is a show. And I heard people talking about it a lot. Are you kind of like, I've been down this road with like a great funny show that I know is great and funny. So don't worry. Let's keep plugging away. Let's keep taking our cuts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I t totally, um, I think to some degree it takes a minute to, for the audience to settle into, you know, if you've really created kind of a, a vibe and a, and a, and a world that it feels kind of unique, uh, sometimes it takes a second to settle into that. And I, I think it takes people, uh, I mean, a lot of people watched Sonny and they were like, I don't really totally get this. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they and then they, they had some friend who was super into it that forced them to get back into it. And then they're like and then suddenly it clicks and they're like, oh, I get it. OK, right. And it's suddenly really funny. And, and I, I remember 
it being that way for me when I was a kid watching Kids in the Hall, which is one of my favorite sketch shows of all time, I didn't get it. Uh, when I was a kid, I, I watched it. I was like, I just, this is so stupid. <laughs> it's so dumb. Um, <laughs> but then it, it took like the, but it was like the third or fourth time at a friend who just insisted, was like, we're going to watch it. We're going to watch it. And, and some, I don't even remember what sketch it was, but it finally clicked. I was like, oh, it's supposed to be dumb. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's so dumb that it comes all the way full circle to being smart again. And, uh, and I think, I, I think that, that it's true that I think AP bio is, is a little that way, but I think it's also that, I, I I just think the show's gotten better too. Mm-hmm. I just think it's gotten better at what it does. With Peacock, were you uh, were you able to like the subject matter? I mean, in the trailer alone, there's bricks of cocaine, and it seems like there's cursing, and like it, it looks like the envelopes being pushed. Is that because of Peacock? Is there like new rules because you're streaming, or would it have been that way no matter what? Uh, I, it would have been that way no matter what to a degree. Uh, but there was this, uh, you know sort of, you know, Mike O'Brien was kind of making jokes about, uh, is making jokes on the show, kind of like, like he's got a, there's a scene where a character, one of the students like curses mm-hmm. and gets away with it. And another one of the students is like, oh, are we, can we do that now? Yeah. <laughs> now? You know, so it's kind of a wink to the fact that we can get away with a little bit more on Peacock. But, uh, but one of the things I really like is that Mike, you know, very consciously didn't really do anything that I think for the most part, with the exception of like a few curse words and, you know, a couple jokes here and there, uh, the show, it tonally could still have been this way. It stayed on, true to itself. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And even though, you know, it struggled a little bit on NBC. They they were the 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 studio and the network were always very supportive of the show. Mm-hmm. They they were always fans of the show, which was nice. That was, that's that was put that up there in the pantheon for me of of like Arrested Development and other shows where it was like, if you watched it and you saw it and you have a good sense of humor, it's like fuck. This should get better ratings. This should be more popular. And I and I think though that that's the beauty of like the streaming services now is like you're not at the mercy of those networks anymore, and that the people who do like it are probably the people who are on Peacock who are who are streaming and binging and watching. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think it, you know, being on Peacock is I think a little bit more freeing because I, I think as long as they see that they, yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing for for a streaming service or even like a smaller basic cable network is what they want to see is a core audience that stays. Uh Um, It doesn't have to be big, but if they see the audience, they see that it has an audience and they see that that audience is sticking around and watching every, then they see it and they go, if they're smart, they see that and they go, okay, it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. As long as we're holding on to the people who do watch it, the more people watch it, the more people it retains, and then it grows and grows and grows. And that's what happened with Sonny. It was, right. it was, you know, it started very, very small, but those people were like rabid fans, and the cult just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, until and when eventually. you do like thirty nine seasons of a show, like you're doing with Sonny, it's just gonna keep on. It's like the, the Sonny's like the universe; it just keeps expanding. <laughs> it just it's gonna go on forever. I hope at least. Right. It just it just is. Yeah. <laughs> you had said that in you guys noticed in Hulu you had a bigger fan base. I think that makes perfect sense because this show is pretty eccentric and a little little off the wall and weird. And that's kind of the millennial generation, even Gen yeah. Z to an extent, where it's like you think of like NBC primetime, I forget what you guys Thursday nights. Um uh- what, whatever whatever night it was. Like, you think of that as more of a middle America, more yeah. of Toledo, who kind of wants the Big Bang Theory, and they want the laugh track. But, like, our guys are, or my my crew, my friends, my the, the millennials I identify with, like the fucking weird shit, like yeah. the off-the-wall shit. Like the, yeah, like the totally. big bag of spaghetti and Katie Holmes day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. I mean, uh, it, w- there, it, it makes perfect sense to me that the show did okay on NBC – but did really, really well when they were putting the when they were putting the episodes on Hulu to stream it on Hulu. Um, you know, so it, it became very clear, I think, to people very quickly that it was clearly a streaming show. Um, and honestly, the only reason it didn't, you know, because there was talk for a while, it was like, okay, maybe we'll just we'll just transition it from NBC to Peacock. But Peacock had made a decision. My understanding is that Peacock had made a decision not to do original programming. Um, or, or either original programming across the board or just original comedies. I can't remember what it was. And when that happened, it was like NBC was like, ah, we can't wait anymore. We got to open up this slot. We're announcing that we're canceling the show. Whereas Peacock, even though Peacock was already like, 
you know, kind of scoping it out and trying to decide mm. like, maybe we'll, maybe we'll do like one original comedy and we'll give it a shot because it saw that it had a big streaming audience. So it was like, we have this property, we've paid for it. We have this thing and, and it has a streaming audience. We could take it and put it on Peacock, you know? So once they decided to make original programming, uh, we, I think we were the first show they picked up. Or we, I know we were the first comedy they picked up. Um, That's the reason why. So that was, yeah, it was that. That was very gratifying because it, 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 it. I think it hopefully it proved to people that the show does have an audience. They just didn't want to watch it linear. They wanted to watch it on streaming. And it sounds like uh, if you keep wearing these gray sweatpants, that the audience is here for it, man. These, uh, this video, this, the glurst is apparently a very real thing, and you in a pair of gray sweatpants <laughs> seems to be a fucking hit, pal. <laughs> Yeah, what's with the gray? Why? Why is it? Why? What's with the gray? Is there something happening with those gray? I gotta. Yeah, I your gotta dick looks better, <laughs> Glenn. That's what it is. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you learned. You didn't know that. Never. You don't spend enough time on the internet. Yeah, you're my man. very late to the game, Glenn. <laughs> this is a problem. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. I don't spend a lot of time on the internet. Uh, I, I really don't. And this is uh, something you really do need to know because one, you can exploit it for good, but also you got to be knowing you can't be wearing like your gray sweatpants to like out with the kids or some shit you gotta keep it in check glenn that's right yeah no it is good to know because i've gotten very comfortable in sweatpants and i think in the wrong situation it would be extremely offensive um, <laughs> but i think in terms of like putting a television show on that millions and millions of people see i think that's the right place for yeah, it. yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely uh we're gonna throw a sock on though just i don't know i, I guess it's work whatever you're doing working if that's god's gift then good for you i think i think uh i i, I think a, a a nice a nice wool uh, hiking sock would, wouldn't hurt. <laughs> I got just the pair for it. I got an orange pair. I know when to put those down my pants. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we just read an interesting article uh, talking about your experience with Sonny and how you, you feel like you kind of like recommitted and you're back fully into it. And there was a period of time where you were kind of growing to maybe resent it. Is that too strong of a word? Or was there really like a, you know, kind of a, you fell out of love with it for a period of time there? Yeah, well, it wasn't that I fell out of love with the show. Uh, yeah, it's it's a little weird. To say. I mean, it is. It's what I was resenting was not the show. It was that I. It was that I had. It was that I felt tethered to it in a way that was preventing me from exploring other things that I wanted to explore mm -hmm. um, as an actor, as a writer, as a producer. Uh, I'm just not one of those people. I, what I discovered is that I'm not one of those people that has just boundless and endless amounts of energy. Mm -hmm. uh, I can only dedicate so much brain power and energy and, you know, I can only dedicate so much uh, before I'm drained and I'm done. And, you know, I tried to do other things while doing Sunny at the same time. And it was just, I found it extremely exhausting. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of got to the point where it was like, well, now that means I can only do Sunny. And after so many years and kind of feeling like ah, I said everything I wanted to say on this show, I, I just felt tapped out mm -hmm. and it wasn't a good feeling. It was, it, you know, I, I was feeling that way in mostly in season 11 and then I did season 12 and I felt like, I was like, I think this is going to be my last season. So I actually had a lot of fun with season 12. Cause I was like, again, I'm going to go, I'm going to go out swinging. I'm going to go out, try to go out on top here and I'm going to throw everything at this last list, last season of mine. And then, you know, but taking two, I, I took basically the last two years off of mm -hmm. the writer's room. Um, you know, I was doing rewrites with the guys for seasons 13 and 14, uh, but I wasn't there breaking stories and, and, and writing original scripts and stuff like that. So, but so taking those two years off has been extremely refreshing and, mm -hmm. and it's also honestly given me a chance to re appreciate the, the yeah. show, and, um, you know, re fall in love with, uh, the show and, you know, get a little time away from those fucking guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was that a discussion you had with them? Did you, was there like a hard conversation to have at one point? Like guys, it's just not, I'm not feeling it anymore. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a hard conversation because um, we have, we're, I'm able to have those kinds of conversations with those guys. And so I think one of the reasons why the show has worked as long as it has, because we can have those conversations with each other. Right. Um, and they were incredibly supportive. Um, they didn't want me to go, uh, but they totally understood. And, you know, uh, and, and I said, I, you know, the last thing I wanted, I don't want to like ruin the, show um but if this ends the show uh then it ends it i i, wow. I can't i can't i can't keep forcing myself i i 
I, I, I was like, I can't keep forcing myself to come in and, and, and work on something that, that I'm starting to get mad because it's getting in the way of me following other dreams. Um, you know, and they were like, we totally get it. Uh, we're going to keep going. We want to try doing a season without you. And, uh, you know, I was like, okay, you know, cool. And, you know, when they got to the end or near the end of writing season 13, which was my first season kind of away from the show, or actually I think somewhere near halfway through the writing process, they were like, we're having a lot of trouble figuring out how to write every single story without you in it. Would you be willing to come back and just act in a few? And I was or at that point, I'd already had enough time away from the show where I was like, oh, act on the show. That's the easy. That's the fun part. Yeah. You can just show up and do that. Right. That's like, yeah, show up and ask. I was like yeah. yeah, I was like hundred percent. Yeah, totally. So that's why I ended up, you know, uh, acting in the six that I was in and, and, and I couldn't help myself. I, I kind of went in and did rewrites, uh, on, on just those episodes. <laughs> 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 I really had nothing to do with, uh, the four episodes that I'm not in, like as an actor, producer, or a writer. Honestly. Very Dennis Reynolds ass. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that, that must be nice to get that, that like reappreciation though. Cause yeah. you, you step away and you're like, ow, oh, you know what? I got it pretty fucking good. It's kind of like a relationship, you know, yeah. it's like you go on a break and you're like, wait a minute, babe, I do love you. Let's get back together. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you got to go through a trial separation, uh, <laughs> you know, but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I think I, I look at it almost more as like, I've, I've always looked at our, our situation. I, we've always felt like more, more like a band to me mm -hmm. than a TV show, uh, because we write, because, you know, we're, we're in the studio or we're, you know, we're in the practice space and we're writing songs together and then we're playing them. And then we're, you know, and it, we spend a lot of time with each other, you know, and, and it's like, okay, we're going to put out another album. It's what it feels like every year. Mm -hmm. You know, and for me, I was just like, I got to go off and do a side project. You know what I mean? I got to do my solo album or I got to do, you know, or I, I just want to be part of a different band for a little while and just, just, you know, do that. And then, but it was always in my mind. I was like, I, I mean, if they're going to keep going, maybe I'll come back at some point. You know, I mean, I, I never closed the door completely. Because um, you guys did downplay it a lot. I remember our first interview was, I think, season one AP Bio. And it was, you had been in the news and you re re reiterated it with us. We're like, Sonny's not going anywhere. But it seems like you were like, if it's going to go, it's going to go. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, coy <laughs> motherfuckers. You <laughs> liars. You're all just liars in Hollywood. <laughs> um, I think I just didn't want to, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to commit myself, uh, you know, uh, in the press to, you know, I don't want to make promises that I couldn't keep. And, um, you know, I wanted to allow myself the opportunity to, to truly walk away. Um, if that's what I ultimately decided to do. Um, so it wasn't really my, it wasn't like my intention, you know, I did want to, but I also did want to honor, you know, that we wrote toward that at the end of season 12, I wanted to honor the stories that we wrote and say like, this is the, this is the story that we wrote and we're sticking to it. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to just bail on that. It, it, it felt like, even though, you know, we usually hit the reset button, this felt to me like it was something where I was like, no, we need to, we need to like explore this. Like mm -hmm. the guy left the bar, he said, I'm leaving. I want to go be a dad. And, uh, you there was know, definitely and, and some I, finality I, to it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I thought just for, I, I thought just in my mind, I thought like, well, if they're going to keep going, then, um, you know, hopefully this will give them, give them something to write to, um, you know, that will maybe shake things up in a way that'll make it interesting to them as writers is like, you know, sort of like I was kind of pitching them on the idea that like, okay, now that, now that this guy's gone, what are we, you know, and doing episodes that are where you're trying to figure it out. Like, like a okay, new well, challenge. Well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and so I, I thought that would be a good thing. Um, but, you know, I don't think it's I think if any one of us, you know, were to really leave the show, I, I do think it would be tough to keep going because. Yeah, that was the I argument I made when when you first when there was, you know, some sort of stepping away where I was like, Sonny's a tough one because there are so many shows that have the lead. And Sonny has five leads. Yeah. There's like there, everyone plays such a humongously important role. It's it's tough to even lose one leg on that. Bar yeah, stuff. but it's also all. I think it's. I think that cuts both ways because it's like I think that's why it could survive in the in the in the way that it did because it wasn't. You know, those guys can stand alone, but there is something about it's not going to be the same without everybody. Yeah, it just. You know, I I think it might have been. I think in some ways it might have been particularly hard with my character because when there's there's usually a straight man in 
the in any given episode or or any given scene there's the person who's sort of the voice of reason right you know trying to rein everybody in yeah you need that um, god damn it you idiots like there's <laughs> nobody to do that yeah, yeah. And, and it, it does that does shift you know it's not always my character but uh, over the course of the you know 12 years that we've done the show i i would say that more often than not that responsibility had fallen on my shoulders um so I, I think they found themselves also in a situation where they were like, who's going to be the straight man? Nobody wants to be the straight man. Nobody, nobody, nobody could be no, really. Nobody, yeah. So, yeah. so I think that that presented a, a, a very specific challenge uh, to the group dynamic when my character went away. I mean, that would be my guess. I didn't, I, I haven't talked to them specifically about that, but that would be the challenge for me if I were writing the show without my character in it is being like, who's going to play the straight man role right. most of the time. Who's going to be the, the one who's irritated with everyone, everyone's <laughs> now with, with like comedies, do you get into character for roles? Is it, or are you like, obviously you do, but is it as serious as like a, a Daniel day Lewis? Like, do you identify with the plight of teachers now? Like from AP bio with Jack? Um, it's not, you know, for me to drop into character, it's a little bit more esoteric than that. Um, I do, I do drop into character, but it usually, especially with a TV show, uh, doesn't take a lot of time because I've spent enough time as that character that <sighs> something in the dialogue, something in the props, something, you know, I can usually just kind of flip the switch mm -hmm. and, and, and drop into that thing. It's interesting. I saw something on social media today, actually. It's, um, I was looking on my Twitter feed and uh, somebody did a side-by-side -side picture of me and Dennis, and they were like, I don't know what it is, but I have a really hard time believing that Glenn Howerton plays Dennis Reynolds because they look and feel like totally different people. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I've ever heard somebody articulate that. And, and I actually kind of stopped and I actually thought about that for a second. And I was like, yeah, they're really like, I, I think down to like just subtle changes in the facial structure. Mm -hmm that actually happen when I drop into that character. Um, and it's the same thing I think with Jack, you know, a pompous person's resting face is very different than my resting face. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I think so, I, I think just something as simple, I, for me it's whatever the character's motivation is, not to get a, too actory, but I mean, it's kind of basic actory shit, but like whatever the character's motivation is, usually with the comedy, it's so extreme and so fucking insane and ridiculous. That if I can if I can drop into really feeling that desire to achieve whatever that ridiculous goal is, that's really all it takes for me if, mm -hmm. to drop into character. Um, but there is a switch for sure from me to Jack um, or from me for, to Dennis. It's and it's really just about like okay now I got to now I have to fight for this insane uh, you know goal of my character and usually that's kind of all it takes. Do you have any uh, school experience, teacher like memories or anything that like you drew from? For I mean I don't know if there's any teacher out there like quite like Jack, but uh, was there anybody who stuck out like you're emulating or trying to mimic from from your actual school days? Not really. Probably for the uh, best. That probably means your schooling experience was really well, good. Your schooling experience was weird as hell. You bounced around all over yeah, the place. You were right? everywhere, man. Yeah, I was, I was, I was all over the place. Uh, and I had, you know, my fair share of good teachers and bad teachers, um, you know, but, but I always, you know, it was always important to me from the beginning to, to be able to understand what it is that, that Jack actually brings to the equation that's positive, even though, you know, it's, 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 it's on the surface. It's, it, it, you know, I'm playing a character who's like no to everything, which is the exact opposite of, uh, of kind of, the way most things work uh, mm -hmm. uh, dramatically, you know, you kind of need a character to be like, yes, let's try that. Yes, let's do that. Instead, my character's like, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. And I'm not going to do this. <laughs> and, you know, so it was important for me if I, if I was going to come in with the sort of almost a, an anti-intention as a character that I had to know, you know, that what he was going to bring to the table, whether he knew it or not, was that he was inadvertently going to be teaching these kids some adult life lessons just by virtue of the fact that they were going to get a dose of reality that they'd never experienced mm. before. And, and a little bit of like, sort of like hardcore brutal honesty from someone in a way that they, they probably weren't used to from their parents or their teachers. So, you know, so in a way I was like, 
they are learning something from him and it was, and it was good for me. And I needed to attach myself to that in order to, to kind of latch on to the more positive side of the character. What's the worst thing that ever happened to you in school? <sighs> what is the worst thing that ever happened to me in school? Nobody's ever asked me that. Uh, what is the worst like thing? Like one time I was in gym class doing the uh, the sit-ups and I was, there was like three, two, one, go, and I farted in front of the whole <laughs> class. That was very traumatic for me. Yeah, I, I you know, it's funny. There, there, I feel like there's there, there are definitely people who are like high school kids who just rip farts and they think it's hilarious <laughs> and they're cool with it. Mm, I was not that uh, guy. I wasn't either. I was mortified. I was like, no, <laughs> bodily function in front of people. Fuck. <laughs> Totally. I no. I I can relate to that. I I I did not become fully, kind of fully secure with myself and who I was until I was like thirty. Sadly, <laughs> I was. I'm thirty two. I'm not there still yet. Still going. Yeah. Still going strong. Yeah. I I had Mrs. I, Pillsbury make us clean out her mini fridge, which was just full of Twinkies, while she sat on her desk. This is probably third. This sounds like a script. Between, Mrs. Pillsbury between, cleaning out her Twinkies. I forget exactly. It was between third and fifth grade, and she sat on her desk. Very unladylike, if oh, you know what I mean by God. this. In a skirt. She was a hefty lady. She looked every bit of Mrs. Pillsbury. Oh. And it was the first time I'd ever seen pubic hair. Oh. And it scars me to this day. It was Jesus. it was a jungle. It was <laughs> awful. It's the worst thing that's yeah. ever happened to me. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 uh, I, I, yeah, because you're like, don't, no, that's not what I want to picture. I don't want to, yeah, that's, you know. Nope. She just made us <laughs> clean her fridge, Glenn. She like, she just, we weren't it's doing, we, labor. it was worse than what Jack does. Like, he was like, what are you talking about? You want us to just clean your fridge in your, in your classroom? Why do you have a fridge in the classroom, by the way? It was awful. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Talk about a hardcore dose of truth, man. <laughs> Shit. Uh, um, I want to think, I I wish I had more time to, to. I wish I had an answer for you because I. There's. Yeah, I mean, there, I'm sure there's like shitty things that happen. Well, listen. All right, what, what was your worst subject? Oh, uh, history, probably. I. I just didn't. I just didn't get it. I just didn't give a fuck about <laughs> history. Anytime. Anytime somebody started talking about what somebody did in some year, I was like, I don't fucking <laughs> care. I couldn't figure out how. <laughs> that related to my life now and yeah. what I needed in this moment. I was like, like, and then they say to me, like, like history I, repeats itself. It's like shut the fuck or, up, or I you don't won't, care. you won't learn. Like if you'll, you'll, you'll make the same mistakes in the history of the past. Like I didn't even think of enslaving people. Yeah. That thought never even <laughs> crossed my mind. If you didn't bring it up, like what are you talking about? <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I, I just, I, I don't know, man. And I, and I actually liked school. I, I really did. I mean, I, I loved math. I loved science. Did you? Let me, let me ask you about math real quick because yeah. I, I, I don't want to take up too much more time. But we did a challenge here today. Forty. Third grade level multiplication questions in a minute. Uh, how many of those do you think you could get? Or, or, or if you could get them all, how fast do you think you would do it? I, I honestly don't know. I don't know. This guy I got think- twenty. Two and I then he 20, ran out of time. I got twenty three. I ran out of time. For, I, to be clear, I wasn't told there was a time limit, so I was taking my time counting on my fingers. I didn't realize there was only a minute limit, and I got I got a failing, a very failing. Like rate. if I asked you right now, what's nine times seven? Do you know the answer? Sixty three. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so you, you'd be good. That was a yeah. show off so, move right yeah. there, <laughs> Mr. Fancy Pants over here. <laughs> I did. I was saying I did. I'm so bad at math that I got a perfect score on my SAT writing. And I still had really bad SAT scores. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that sounds about right. I don't know if we have time for it, but I, I love, I love shit like that. I, I, uh, I, yeah, I just, I always just really like math to me was like a fun game. It was like a puzzle. It was like a puzzle with numbers. Like it was fun to me. Uh, I, I understand why other people didn't like it. It was just, uh, I, I, I loved this it. weird, man. I loved math and science and kind of hated history and literature. It See, that's like, crazy. I, I picture, I had you pegged the exact yeah, yeah, total opposite. opposite. Yeah. It doesn't seem like the yeah, art most, type. Yeah. Most artsy types are a little bit more into like history and literature. And I fucking hated that stuff. I couldn't, I could, I just, I'm also, I think, of, I, I mean, I'm going to say I'm, I also just don't, I, I like things, uh, mm. I don't know. Like it's almost like history and like reading a book is just too much of a damn commitment. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, it's like golf. Like I can't, I can't play golf. Like mm. I, I fucking can't stand golf. I'm like, it's too, it's too fucking slow. It's too fucking slow. I want to, I want to hit, I literally, this is what I would, if this is what I want to do. I want to hit the ball 
and sprint to my ball. And I don't want to wait for somebody behind me to hit the ball. I want to sprint to my ball. I want to hit it. I want to sprint to the ball again and hit it again. And I want it, and I ju- and I want it to be over in six holes. <laughs> you know who you need to golf with? Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg That's how right. Wahlberg golfs. He he treats it like cardio. He hits it and he <laughs> sprints. And, and, and does he wakes up at like three a.m. to do it? Yeah, I swear That's to God, legit how he plays. I swear to God. <laughs> so there was like a <laughs> like an Esquire piece on him or whatever, like two years ago, and it was like That's his life hack, the, the right? Per- the person showed up. The the interviewer uh, showed up. At the course, being like, "Hey, we're, I'm here to interview Mark Wahlberg." They're like, "He just started his round," and he's like, "Well, I'm I'm not gonna sit here for four hours." And they go, "No, he only plays nine. He sprints the whole thing. He'll be back <laughs> here in 45 minutes." <laughs> Legend. <laughs> that's fucking great. That's the way to do it, man. That's the way to fucking do it. Like, I, I I'm all I'm all for that. Although I will say, even nine is too much for me. But again, just kind of I like it. That's that's the only way to make yourself. That's that's the only way to get back to the clubhouse and you know drink your beer. Yeah. <laughs> so you gotta do the nine. You know what I mean. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna, you're, you're backtracking. Speak before I let you go. Speaking of drinking, how's drinking going in quarantine? I know you. I know you like to post the tequila. You posted. No. You posted Jill the other day with some wine and cake. I think Let's for breakfast. Go. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's weird. I, I I think most people would think you know because of who I pl- have played on television that I'm a big uh, I'm a big drinker. Um, but I, generally speaking, I've, I've never been somebody to, to drink at home. Uh, yeah. I, I was always a social drinker. I'm a social drinker. Mm-hmm. Um, but I li- but I've always liked drinking and I've always really liked drinking socially. And when the social thing went away, because it was like, well, we can't be social. I was like, well, but I still want to drink. Yeah. <laughs> so so, uh, so then I'd be like, all right, I'm going to have I'm going to make my and this was like one night. I was like, I'm going to start experimenting and making, you know, making cocktails at home. So. You know, that's how it started. I and think that's like, what a lot of guys did. The women flocked to the sourdough bread. The guys bread, were like, yeah. I want to become a mixologist. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, that is kind of what happened. But really what it now has turned into is just me pour it, just me pouring like Spindrift, you know, and tequila in a glass and drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, man. All right. Hey, uh, really thank you for the time. Uh, you know what? I'm going to, one way or another, I'm going to send you this multiplication test. I want to see what you would get. Either you're a publicist, I'll email it or we'll tweet it at you or whatever. I want to see what your score would be. I love that, actually. I I, I will absolutely do that. Um, maybe my wife and I will do a little competition. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> we'll love it. Thank you so much. AP Bio's out now. You can catch it on uh, Peacock. Please go stream it because it's so fucking funny. We look forward to uh, the return of Sonny. And thanks always for the time, man. Yeah, man. It's great seeing you guys, as always. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. You too, buddy. Enjoy the tequila tonight. Bye.